I don't think I can go on. I know you can't. You need that girl. I'm supposing she won't come. She must be made to come. No. Had you any choice? No. She's a doctor. Once she's here, she'll understand. Well, she mustn't be harmed. If she's harmed, she wouldn't be any use to us, would she? So be it. White Cross? Yes. Yes, it is. Are you well? Yes, we are very well. And you? Yeah, we're fine. Well, where are you from? Dunning Farm, near Evesham. And how many of you are there? Just the two of us. No, I mean at the farm. Oh, not many. Twelve. We've been there since the summer. We tried to find you at the Grange place, but it was burned down. Yes, that's right. We saw your notice there saying that you'd come on here. You mean you were looking for us? Yes, that's right. We were told how to get to the Grange so that we could find you. Your name wouldn't be Greg, would it? Yes. Ah, then we have some regards to give you, Greg, from a lady called Abby Grant. What? No, please. Better to keep apart. We are well, but others of us are not. Yes, you're right. Well, where are they? Did you find Peter? Oh, yes, yes, she did. He's with her. She found him. Never give up, Greg. Well, where are they? They're at Denning. But they're ill. She said you had a doctor here, Ruth. Yes, that's right. Have you still got that doctor? Yes, she's here. Well, what's wrong with them? It sounds like a kind of toxemia. Blood poisoning. I won't know till I get there. How long do they say they've been at this place? Well, since the summer. Abby must have been on her way back. Well, there's something about it I don't like. What? I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. Do you want to take a look? Well, I'd like to see Abby again. Oh, yes. No. They've probably got an epidemic. Stay away. It's a very good point. They were being very careful. What about Ruth? I don't have much choice to her. Well, I don't know. I still don't like it. I mean, why haven't we heard of these people before? Well, we'll get your exact route from you, as usual. We have a route from you. Which road you're taking? Yes, most certainly. Uh, the B4219, till it hits the uh, A38. Then the A40 and the A44 to Evesham. Just before Evesham, there is a, a hill and a bridge. You take a little track to the left and uh, the third branch, the middle branch of three, and that's us. It'll take you through the town of Pershaw, won't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Did you actually go through Pershaw? Yes. What about infection? Uh, oh, no, we, we skirted around it. Uh, we didn't go through it. <gasps> no, of course not. Uh, a little to the south. Or what about Abby, before she became ill? Was she still our plump little self? <laughs> You're checking on us now. <laughs> I think they are. Abby is tall and slim. She's younger than me. She had her hair all cut short. It's growing now. OK. Pass. Is there nothing 
nothing you want? Oh, no, thank you. No, we got food and drink and a stove and things like that. We should be there before night. Please. Cart all right. It's a good horse, that, too. Our best one. I'm Ruth, the doctor. Hey, Where... no. No, don't go near him. Where are they? Who? The people who are ill. Abby is not here. What's going on? I'm afraid we had to practice a little deception. Where's Abby? London. Just the four lads here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. London? Look, we keep our distance from people we meet. From him, from your friends. So as not to touch them with what we bring from London. But you are contaminated now, being with us. You can't go back to your friends. You will kill them. Contaminated with what? We don't know. We call it the London sickness. And you too have it? We don't know. What are the symptoms? You feel very tired and sort of paralyzed with it. Then you need treatment. We are pushing our luck coming out as far as this. Yeah, but we've got a hospital in London. We've got doctors, x-rays, the lot, and we want to get back there. All right, yes, there is a lot of disease in London, but we're all right there. We're well looked after. You've got a doctor. Why do you need me? Well... Abby sent for you. She told us where you were. She asked us to come and get you. She wants you. She, she said that you would come. You said she was ill? Yeah. And her son? Yes. What's wrong with them? Look, love, you really don't have the choice. Petrol? Yeah, heaps. Well, they gave me ten gallons and a thousand cigarettes. Well, for the lads, like. And matches. And makeup. Yeah. And a hospital. Soap? Yes, yeah, soap, bum. We got everything. We got electric light. I think we should be off. It is urgent. I'm not coming. Please. Abby must take her chance. You have a doctor. My friends need me. Not only them, there are other settlements. In London, they need you more. You've got to come. I haven't got to come, and you can't make me. Please. You know we can, but don't force us to. It will be very unpleasant. What about you? Are you going to stand by and let them do this? I don't know what you're on about. Our slot probably won't be far behind you once we get the car going. Things are great there, by the sound of it. What about my friends? Oh, that'll be taken care of, Ducky. He's, uh, he's gonna send someone. I wonder. One of the lads. I'm sending him. Disinfect the cart. Yeah, all right. Use all I give you. Okay, don't worry. feel terrible. Look, I'm sorry. Please don't be scared. It's just that we couldn't very well walk up to you in your settlement and say, come to London, will you? And you just said no. Would I? Well, wouldn't you? That's why we pretended we came from that place. 
You said a lot of people. How many? You've been told to say nothing till you see for yourself. Greg! Oh, you must be frozen. Cure. How long would it take us to get to Denning Farm? Well, if you left early enough. I suppose you could get there and back in a day. Mm, I'd love to see Abby again. Well, I don't think it'd be wise just yet. Not for sickness, though. Got to think of Paul. Oh, so have you. Anyway, I don't mean now. Uh, all the same, I'd, I'd like to take a ride over there. Greg. Don't worry about that smell. It's London. It's the only thing about that smell. In a few hours, you won't even notice it. Cigarette, please. Have one. No. Go on, it helps. What are they for? Rats. You better get your gear together now. We're not going to have a chance once we get out. Rats, with those things? The noise helps to keep them off. I can't get this thing any closer. open. They go in packs. If you meet one of them on its own, that means it's dying. But it is just as dangerous. Please come. Those fires? To be scientific, they are started by spontaneous combustion. Heaps of bodies. Or heaps of something. I don't know. You won't get rid of me. I'll get back. You see. I'll get back. Put your things away.
We're going south now, under the river. It's messy, but the big danger is flooding. Yeah. I never did like going under the river. Come on now. That's our petrol supply coming in. Hello, Benji. This way, please. More rats? Yes. We go up this way now. When we go out, stay in the light. It keeps the rats away. Turn it off. They're in now. Well, be the new doctor. This is George. I'm glad you're here. I'll just check you didn't bring anything in with you. Yeah, OK. okay. What's that? Oh, films. We like family shows, mostly. Hey, what's on? Laurel and Hardy. Oh. <laughs> See you. Yeah. Come on. Now, look. There is someone here who will answer all your questions. Karen! Oh. Hello, Manny. Penny, you're back. You yeah. made it. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Well, I'm sorry they had to bring you like this. Put your gear down and shake hands. I'm Manny. I know your roof. Well, come on, love, you're here. Welcome. All right, Umble? All right, Manny, thank you. Everybody's very grateful to you. That's all right. I'll clean up now. See you later. OK, great. How was it? Oh, not bad. They risked their lives to bring you here. Bring me where? And you told her? No. Right, hang on. Hello, Manny. Yep. Yep, she's here. All in one piece. Well, a bit shell shocked. Yeah. Yeah, they had to. You coming over? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, that's all right, I understand. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, see you. This is what you might call my private exchange. It doesn't go very far, just round the house. The radio goes further. Well, come on. Grub up in five minutes. Bruce? Oh, come on, love. How was the tunnel? How do I answer that? Well, but what I mean it is... It was dry. Good. If it had been wet, you wouldn't have got through. The river would have all slopped over. We've been waiting for that to happen. Here, have a cigarette. 
Oh, thanks. You'd have had to come round a long way. Where's Abby? Well, I wish I knew. I thought she was a nice girl, a bit bossy, but I liked her. You told me she was here. Well, she was, Ruth, honestly. She was standing right where you are now. I remember when she first came here. Yes, yeah, she was looking for her son, Peter. I was told she'd found him. Well, I had to play that by ear, didn't I? All she cared about was that boy of hers. I mean, we tried to stop her leaving. She wouldn't listen to reason. Just off, just like that. I mean, I was very sorry. She'd have been useful here. When did she go? About a month ago. She won't have lasted long. You abducted me. I'm sorry. We had no choice. I had my orders, Ruth. Get me out of here. Please. Please, Ruth. Don't think too badly of us. Come on through. Come on. Oh, come on, Ruth. Come on. Well, now. What have we got here? God, roast duck. Well, I wonder where that came from. Buckingham Palace Gardens or the Serpentine? Well, make a change from pigeons and uh, sprouts. Winter greens. Come on, Ruth, please, be my guest. Hot water, Ruth, and soap. I'll tell you what, I'll play you a tape that Mac picked up at his radio. Mac's our radio expert. You mean a broadcast from outside? Yeah. Mac's been trying for a year. This is the first time he's got anything. Come and listen. If you listen to hear this. me, come to the Malik in Cairo. Come to the Malik in Cairo. There are only 12 people here. The people have food and fuel. Come to the Malik in Cairo. That's it. When was that broadcast? About six weeks ago. Mac tried to call them back, but he reckoned they didn't know about the set. This guy called every day for four days. Then nothing. Here, Ruth. Good girl. Why have you brought me here? No, all right, all right, all right, all right! Sorry. That extra place was set for the doctor. He was going to eat with us and answer all your questions. Now, he can't be here, because when I called him just now, he got an emergency. Take me to him. All right, love. Nessie, this is Ruth. Come in, come in, Doctor. I'm the matron, assistant surgeon, anaesthetist and general factotum. My name's Nessie. We're not aseptic in here. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Yes, that's his lordship there, the doctor. I'm very glad you're here. Come and have a look at this. You didn't qualify? No. I did four and a half years. That's fair enough. This man has what we call the London sickness. The first cases were about two months ago. Rapid onset, slight fever. When he's conscious, sharp-witted and acute fatigue in all his muscles. I don't know what it is. It's years since I did any medicine, proper medicine, I mean. I was a health officer. But here we are. Come and sit down, please. I heard about you from Abby Grant. My dear, I knew that if I could just talk to you, I could persuade you to help me. So, uh, I'm afraid I had you brought here. I'm really sorry about it. Please forgive me, but I had you. 
Now, uh, may I fill the background in for you? Yes, please. Well, about a year ago, when the plague struck us, I seem to be the only doctor left in London. I met Manny. Uh, you've met him? Yes. Well, he managed to keep a couple of generators going and built up an organisation. With some help from the doctor? <laughs> yes, Nessie, we were in it together. Then Nessie came along and propped us up. He's waking, doctor. Ah, come. Hello, Mac. How are you? This is Ruth, another doctor. Say hello. He knows what's going on, don't you? Are you the radio engineer? I heard a tape of yours. That's right. Can we do a little test, Mac? Can you blink five times? Thanks, Mac. We're going to get you well. We need you. God knows we need everyone. Look, would you mind explaining to me exactly... How's your biochemistry? What's weariness caused by? Lactic acid in the tissues. Not being properly degraded. Mm. Have you come across this? No. Well, it seems to be peculiar to London. The London sickness. Our main work here is medicine, not surgery. Except for emergency and orthopedic. We don't have a blood bank. But we do have radiography. How many? Londoners? Well, there were about a thousand. A lot of them ill with typhoid, a dysentery sort of thing. And the number fell right down to about 500. Alarming, but uh, it's fairly stable now. We have as many births as deaths. 500 Londoners we are. A man, he must have told you that we forage. Yes. I suppose you can get just about anything. Well, we've no blood or serum. We have some fresh food and vegetables. A high sickness rate. How high? 10%. 50 patients in various stages. Cuts and scratches go septic. There seems to be a general poison in the atmosphere, so we pump everybody full of antibiotics. How is he? Going. We don't know about the London sickness. Mac. Mac. Poor fellow. I'll do the autopsy, but I shan't find anything. I don't know what to look for. When did he get ill? Three days ago. You see, Ruth, as a statistician, I know that our 500 souls have about 100 breeding pairs, right? Yes. About 100 couples who can have children. And that's the lower limit for the human race. If we sink below that, we have a fair chance of extinction in a few generations. Uh, like your settlements. They won't survive, they're too small. London's about the only place on earth where so many people would be together still after the sickness. Or maybe Tokyo, New York. But we haven't heard from them. We heard from Cairo. Twelve. If you want my opinion, I don't think there's any chance of lasting out here. That's from what I've seen. Nessie? Nessie! He hasn't got the sickness. He's just weary. He's all right. What? Oh, sorry. Will you do the surgery tonight, Doctor? Me? No, she won't. Ruth has a decision to make. We forced her to come here. I'd like you to have a peaceful night, Ruth, and consider it. Consider what? Oh, I consider it right. I'll do the rounds. We have quite a bit of equipment here. Two trained nurses and Nessie. Some children who've done science at O level. We're trying to teach them. We need to start a medical school. I'll get someone to show you your room. Sorry, was I staring? Did I say welcome? Oh, yes. Well, here you are, then. They gave me a lick of paint for you, and uh, 
I had a go at those curtains myself. We'll have some supper sent in for you in a minute. Well, Ruth, I, I hope you'll be comfortable. Can you give me a few minutes before supper? Yeah, sure. Right then. It's all right. I'm quite well. That's as may be. Who are you? What you want? My name's Greg. I'm looking for a woman called Abby. Abby Grant. Who? This is Denning Farm, isn't it? Yeah. I'm looking for a woman and her son. Abby and Peter. They're both ill. No one like that here. Well, there is a settlement here. <laughs> what? Some people. <laughs> Just the four lads and me. Well, what about Ruth? Who? Look, a man and a woman came from here looking for a doctor. Now, where are they? The man was Indian. Oh, them! Well, they didn't stop. They went on. Well, they went on where? London! What? In a car. Range Rover. They borrowed my horse and cart. Don't know why. Said I got to disinfect it. Daft. Well, did they leave a route? Did they say which roads they were taking? Oh, you mean one of them maps? Yeah, they gave us some. You know, for when we go. Do you want one? They said to give them out. Could you get me one? Yeah. Uh, uh, just a minute. Um, well, Ruth, uh, the younger one. Or didn't she leave a message to get in touch with her friends? No. Nothing. <laughs> Cross my heart. Well, could you get me one of those maps? As quickly as you can. news about poor old Mac. His troubles are over. And we're going to miss him at radio. Still, an enormous good wish for us all, whatever we're doing today, young and old. That's all. Call you in an hour. All right. Morning, Doctor. Did you sleep well? Yes. This is the Oval, isn't it? Yes, the Oval Cricket Grounds. Were you a keen follower of cricket? No. 
Well, I saw two matches here. One was uh, Surrey against Nottinghamshire, and the other was uh, the last test match. I wasn't a keen follower. Some of them were. Well, as you see, we have here eggs, milk, and we are going to have uh, our own vegetables and some corn, I believe. How do you keep the rats out? Electric fence, and we are very, very careful. Dr. Ruth, anyway. That's you. The doctor is here. Could you come to the surgery as soon as convenient? Okay. Yes? Good morning. Where's the doctor? He's having a sleep. He was up most of the night. Well, have you come to a decision? How can I come to a decision? It's being forced on me, the same as coming here was forced on me. I see. While you're making up your mind, Doctor, will you be so kind as to help in one or two cases? If I can. Good morning, everybody. And how are we all this morning? I've brought you a new doctor, Dr. Ruth. She's come to have a look at us, so we'll have no more grumbles, will we? Well, Kevin, my lad, and how did you sleep? Did you take your breakfast? Sit up a wee bit. Uh, sort Hello. What's your name? Maisie. What are you here for, then? I don't know. You've been having toothache. Have I? It says here they took out a tooth. Open. The back one. Was it a big one? Yeah. And you're taking your pills? Yep. Do you think it was your big black tooth that gave you the tummy ache? Yeah. You don't have any fever. I think you can get up today and help. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Manny. Just to say, we're going to have a funeral for Matt this afternoon, after the doc's done his report. Amul's going to take over the radio. He's been reading it up. Well, I'm going out now to have a look at the coal situation at Battersea, because we're going to run low soon. I'll tell you tonight if I've had any luck. TTFN! Doctor. Hello, Doctor. My name's Barbara. Hello, Barbara. How are you? Well, I need to be up and about. We mustn't rush things. How's the cut? It wasn't a cut, it was just a scrape. One can't do anything here, but it goes bad. You still have some fever. I have to get back to work. Well, how long shall I be here? Until everything's behaving itself. There's no point in getting up before then. Um, may I explain? Please. I'm the planner for all these people. I was in the civil service before, so I know a bit about logistics. I thought Manny did all the planning. Well, he does the day-to-day. -day, but I'm planning the big move. The big move? The one you're here for. We can't do the move without a doctor at either end. Oh, yes, of course. That's why I have to be working. Well, moving 500 people is a big logistical problem. And the doctor wouldn't be content with anything less than 500. He says it's the minimum needed for the human species to survive. Yes. The only trouble is... I don't really know enough about the other end. The other end? The Isle of Wight. Oh, yes, of course. I don't know how much clearance is involved and what the fuel and power situation is. I mean, it's, it's always been at least a two-year plan to get the agriculture going and the life support systems. And frankly, I don't see how it can be done any quicker. But at least I can make sure that the lines of communication work. And now that you're here, he can send out an advance party. Yes. I think we should go across country from here on. It'll take longer. Take even longer if one of those throws a shoe. Anyway, we don't know what we're going to meet in London. Might have to move in a hurry. All right. Well, which way do you want to go? Well, can you see any water there? A well, running water. Yeah, there's River Kennet. You could water the horses there and then follow it down as far as Reading. Yes. Right, good. We'll have some grub at the river. With any luck, 
be in London by nightfall. Someone behind us. Watch it. <laughs> Come on, Wally. You're in the wrong place. Move. Where to? Come on, start walking. I can't live out here. Hard luck. Get moving. You've been vaulted out, remember? Hey, you should have behaved yourself. You've been naughty. Naughty boys get sent outside. Now go on, get back to the rats. Start walking! No cold. It's all under the river. We can't get near it. We just have to look for some other dumps. Who's available, do you know? Oh, um, get me Barbara. Barbara's still in the wood. I thought she was supposed to be back on the job. Has she had a relapse? No. Ah, oh, kill that, Nessie. She's kept Barbara off just to spite me, just because I went straight to the dock. She's power mad. Where's Barbara? I said, where's Barbara? Good evening, Emmanuel. Had a good day? Now, you listen to me, you wizened old woman. Wise old woman, please. I thought Barbara was supposed to be back on the job. Was she? Well, look, you know the doc agreed this morning. Now, which doctor do you mean? Do you mean to tell me that Ruth countermanded what the doc said? Oh, look, Nessie, I've got to have Barbara back on the job. I've got to get that coal organised or we'll all freeze to death. And I've got to get the... Hello, Barbara. Go to bed, Barbara, and dressed. I'm all right, really. You mean you're discharging yourself that strictly against the rules? I know. Dr. Ruth said you need peace and equilibrium to clear your tummy up. I'm going down to the office. Don't stop me. <laughs> well, that's all right, then. Are you all right? What do you mean? You're looking pale. And were you limping when you came in? Me? No. You're not getting your evil hands on me, Nessie. I'm fine. Yes? Don't get up. I just came to say Barbara's discharged herself. Oh. Oh, well, that'll be all right. I was just playing safe. Yes, I know. Maybe for the next week or two, you could bring me into these decisions. Yes, of course. That is, if you're staying. Or are you just gradually slipping into the job rather than making your mind up? It's the same thing. If you say so, Doctor. I would like to know because you're lying there and the Doctor's only mortal, you know. I'm sorry. I mean, go if you want. And spoil the big move? You weren't supposed to know about that. Who told you? Manny? No. Why wasn't I supposed to know? The Doctor has his reasons. Yes. Like not wanting me to know that I'm earmarked for the advance party. Whether you go or not is entirely up to you. You know very well I can't get out of London on my own. Your friend Abby Grant did. How do you know? Most of them come back sick, but she didn't. That's probably because she's dead. God, look at that fire. Don't they know coal's hard to come by? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Doc, I didn't see you. <laughs> Oh, oh, I slept for two hours. Marvellous. Good. I crept in here and your warmth and comfort were too much. I'll put the light on. No, no, no. Uh, I wouldn't mind a cup of tea. Ness is doing the wards. Ruth's on surgery. How is she? Ruth. Oh, we'll give her time. 
Her medicine's better than mine, but her uh, surgery's a bit too uh, tentative. Can't really afford to be tentative with surgery. Well, you don't get too much of that. Surgery? Not yet. Well, I'm glad you persuaded her to stay. You're looking more rested already. I haven't. What? Persuaded her to stay. Well, she's got to. You can't force her to stay. You want to bet? She's a doctor. And as such, she won't be any use to us unless she's free to make her own choice. Well, where are we? Where do we go? Uh, says follow line eastwards to Ealing Broadway. Through some way for tickets? Through some way for tickets. 